الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته أجمعين ومن صار على نهجهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد روى الترمذي رحمه الله تعالى أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يلج النار رجل بكى من خشية الله حتى يعود اللبن في الزرع وثبت عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال سبعة يظلهم الله في ظله يوم لا ظل إلا ظله وذكر منهم ورجل ذكر الله خاليا ففاضت عيناه وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عينان لا يمسهما النار عين بكت من خشية الله وعين باتت تحرس في سبيل الله أيها الأحبة The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم once met the angel Jibreel عليه السلام and he asked Jibreel why is it that I have never seen the angel Mikael عليه السلام smiling I've never seen him laugh and in response to that, Jibreel alayhi salam said that ever since Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala created the hellfire, Mikael did not smile. Since the hellfire was created, Mikael never smiled even once. This incident, as well as some of these ahadith which I have related to you, speak of the merits or the virtues of shedding tears for the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the way of all the prophets. For Allah Jalla wa Ala tells us, إِذَا تُسْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ الرَّحْمَانِ خَرُّوا سُجَّدًا وَبُكِيًّا That when the verses of the Most Merciful are recited, are mentioned before them, then they fall prostrate while crying, while weeping. And the Prophet alayhi salatu was was known for how much he used to cry. Aisha radiallahu anha wa arbaha tells us how the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam would want time between him and Allah azza wa jal. She would say, but O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I love you and I want to be with you. But she says, leave me with my Lord. And she said he would stand in salah, he would stand in prayer, and he would cry so much that even his clothing would become wet from his tears. Then when he sat down, you could see the water, you, should, you could see the tears flowing even from his, from his beard. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to cry when he heard the Qur'an. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu wa arba informs us of how the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said to him, recite the Qur'an for me. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu was amazed. He said, Ya Rasulullah. You want me to recite the Qur'an to you while it was sent down to you? Allah Azza wa Jalla revealed the Qur'an to you. He said, I like to hear it from someone other, someone else. So Abdullah radiallahu an, he started reciting the Qur'an. And then he came to that ayah, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا So in this verse basically, Allah Azza wa Jal is speaking of the Day of Judgment. And what would it be like when we come from every nation with a witness and we come with you as a witness over, over all of them? And the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam at that point said to Ibn Mas'ud, Hasbuk, it's sufficient, enough, stop. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, he says, I went and I saw, and the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam was crying. And in the ahadith I mentioned earlier, just to uh, release the meanings to you, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam informs us in the one authentic hadith that there are seven types of people whom Allah azza wa jal will grant a shade to on that day when there is no shade but his shade. That is the shade which Allah jalla wa ala provides. You all know what day that is. It is the day of judgment. The day when we will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after being resurrected. And the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam informs us of how close the sun will be to one of us. And people will be practically drowning in their sweat. So everyone will be looking for a shade. But there are no buildings that we can take uh, shelter in. There will be no trees. Nothing of that nature whatsoever. Only a shade which will be provided to the people by Allah Azza wa Jal. 
one of those categories of people who will be blessed and who will receive a shade from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala رَجُولٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَابَتْ عَيْنَا is that individual who while being alone not in the company of others remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a result of that his eyes fill up with tears and as for those who cry out of fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam informs us that such people the hellfire will not touch them that these are people who will not enter into the hellfire bi-idhnillahi bi-idhnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also when he used to stand reciting the Qur'an while praying while standing in prayer before Allah azza wa jal the Sahaba say that you could hear his crying in other words you could hear a sound coming from his chest a gurgling sound like the sound of water boiling in a pot salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi and the Sahaba themselves their condition or their state was also like this because they learned from the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam they understood why they would cry before Allah wa ta'ala one time the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said to them لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ لَبَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا وَلَضَحِتُمْ قَلِيلًا the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said to them لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ if you only knew what I know Listen, there are many things that the Prophet ﷺ knew better than us and better than the companions. Yes, they were aware of what he informed them of. But, you know what they say, uh, seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. The Prophet ﷺ, during that night journey of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, the Prophet ﷺ in visions or in dreams had been shown things by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which nobody else has seen this is why he said لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ لَضَحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا so had you known what I know then you would laugh little وَلَبَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا and you would weep a great deal the Sahaba this was perhaps one of the most difficult days ever for them when they heard these words from the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam that whole scene is described for us by one of the Sahaba who says that you would have seen us amongst us those who were covering our heads with their hands and those who were covering their faces with their hands and you could hear nothing but the sound of, of crying and weeping all around you. رضي الله تعالى عنهم وأرضاهم أجمعين and Rahman ibn Affan رضي الله عنه وأرضاه when he would stand next to a grave when he would stand before a grave he would weep he would cry and they would say to him Ya Rahman what is it with you that we mention Al-Jannah one nar Paradise and hell are mentioned before you, but you don't cry as you cry while standing before the grave. In response to that, Rahman radiallahu anhu arba says, Akhbarani Khalili. He says that my close friend, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, informed me that the khabr, the grave, is the first station, it is the first step towards the hereafter. And those who are saved in the grave, those who are protected from punishment in the grave, then what comes after it will be, uh, will be much easier. And the incidents of the Sahaba and how much they cried are plenty. Let me mention one more. When the Prophet ﷺ became very ill, he was sick with that last sickness of his before he died. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu Bilal radiallahu anhu arda came to him to take permission that shall I call the Iqama? He came to inform him that it is time for the Salah. So the Prophet wasallam, because he was so weak and he could not make it out, he said, no, tell Abu Bakr, tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in prayer. Subhanallah, can you believe that the one person who objected, if you will, to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu Allah leading the people was Aisha radiallahu anha. The wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda. But do you think that she objected to it because she didn't love her father? La wallah. Her only reason for objecting was, she said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my father Abu Bakr is a man who cries a great deal. 
He cries so much when he starts to recite the Qur'an. So if he were to stand before the people leading them in salah, he would not be able to get beyond certain verses. Radiallahu anhu wa arda. And many of our pious predecessors and many of the pious uh, you know, of, 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 of these days as well. Walillahi alhamdu wal minna because khair, good is in the ummah always. We have so many incidents of how much they used to cry. And subhanAllah, one of them went to ask the woman, he said, how come every night I hear, you know, your husband crying? And every morning I hear your husband crying. She said, oh, he claims that he has a long journey he has to make and he has no provisions. You know what journey he was speaking of? The journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so many such incidents are found. As far as we are concerned, we need to ask ourselves, how much do we cry before Allah Azza wa Jal? When is the last time you remember that when you heard certain verses of the Qur'an, you were overcome with tears? When is the last time you can remind me, Ya Subhanallah, Umar ibn, ibn Abdul Aziz, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said one day he was asleep, everybody in the house was asleep, and then all of a sudden he got up in the middle of the night and he started screaming, he was crying. So everybody got excited, everyone got up. What is the matter? How come you're crying? He says, I just remembered a sin that I committed. Because he remembered a sin that he committed, he was crying like a baby. When is the last time that we cried thinking about the wrong that we have committed? What about those who pay mortgages on their homes? Who pay interest on their, uh, on, on their car payments? Who are paying interest on their student loans? Those who have declared war against Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have we cried for the sin that we have committed? Whatever sin it is that we are committing, do we know that we are now crossing those boundaries, those limits set for us by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala? When is the last time we cried over any of those things? We cry over the loss of a loved one, which is fine. We cry over the loss of some material things. But we're not willing to cry when we think about, this, about the fact that we may have squandered our future, Al-Jannah, because of some of the deeds that we have committed with Riyadh Billah. Crying for the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is required of us. When we cry after thinking about our sins, when we cry because we, 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 we think about the meeting with Allah Azza wa Jal, then those tears, those tears, will extinguish the fire, the nar of our ma'asi, of our sins, the fire of our sins. In any event, the reason that we seem to have a drought when it comes to our eyes, that our eyes are not shedding tears, is because the eyes and the heart have a very strong relationship. That is, the heart which is hard, the person who has a hard heart, their eyes will be dry. Their eyes will not shed tears. And as for those who have soft hearts, then they are the, the ones who will have eyes which shed tears. And as the Prophet ﷺ told us, the hard heart is the one which is furthest from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's look very quickly first at some of the reasons why our hearts become hardened and therefore our eyes become dry. And then let's look at some of those things which will assist us bi-ibnillahi ta'ala in softening our hearts and causing those tears to shed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for some of the reasons why we have hard hearts, then the ulama or the scholars mentioned many of them. Some of these they took from ayat of the Qur'an and ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and others from experience. And you will notice some of these when you hear them Although you may not have seen a verse in the Qur'an or you may not have seen a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ regarding them except that you will see that subhanAllah, yes indeed, these things have an effect on us and they do harden our heart and therefore we do not shed tears. So of the things that they mentioned was excessive speaking. In other words, we talk too much and that too speaking nonsense for no reason. We, we just want to kill time. We talk and we talk and we talk. Yet the Prophet ﷺ told us من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت. You know that English expression that we have. 
silence is golden. It is very true. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says it. Anyone who believes in Allah and the last day, then let him say what is good, otherwise let him, let him remain quiet. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Excessive eating also is something which causes the hardness of the heart. Excessive laughter, and this is a big one for many of us. May Allah Azza wa Jal place us among those who laugh little and who weep much. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna kathrata dhahiki to me to al-qalb. That excessive laughter kills the heart. It hardens and solidifies the heart. Wal-iyadu billah. And as I said, this is a calamity that many of us are facing. Also, our shortcomings in fulfilling our obligations towards Allah Azza wa Jal. What do you think about a person who doesn't pray? their five daily prayers, or who doesn't pay their zakah, who doesn't fulfill their obligations towards Allah Azza wa Jal. Do you think that such a person is going to have a soft and a tender heart? No, Allah. As well, from amongst those things is what we mentioned perhaps on a previous occasion, and that is our insistence on committing sins. Do you know what happens? Every time we commit sins, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that every time one of us commits a sin, then a black dot is placed on the heart. If we were to repent for that sin, then that black dot is removed, it is wiped out. But if we don't repent, it remains. And then every time you commit another sin, another black dot is placed on the heart until that entire heart is covered in darkness. And that is the hard heart that we are speaking of. And as a result of sin, we will not be able to shed tears before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet, uh, one of the Sahaba, Rukba ibn Amir, radiallahu anhu arda, asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man naja? Man naja? What is the way to salvation? What is the way to salvation? In response to that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Imsik alayka lisana that restrain your tongue and let your home be sufficient for you and weep over your sins cry over your sins this is the way to salvation really taking life seriously not taking life as a joke so he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again guard your tongue and let your home be sufficient for you and this is another big one what happens to many of us is that we become overly social. Yes, we are human beings and thus we are social beings. There is nothing wrong with us visiting. As a matter of fact, it is recommended. Except that some of us go overboard. Visiting one another is a good thing when we visit for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We visit one another for the love of Allah azza wa jal. And those gatherings of ours are filled with the remembrance of Allah and with good things. But our gatherings for the most part, illa man rahima rabbi, are filled with laughter. We just learned from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, inna kathrata dhahiki tumitu al-qalb. This excessive laughter kills the heart. So we have to be careful not to be overly social as well, because this leads to problems. And again, from experience, I'm sure that many of us, many of us will realize, what fi ala qafi'atik. And we then cry over your sins. This is something that you and I have to do. We have to think about whom we have wronged first and foremost. Then we will realize we have to think about the severe consequences of our sins. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inform us of? And the last of the things that I want to mention, although there are many more, is bad companionship. As-sahibu sahib. The companion, your friends, they draw you to in, in, in their direction the direction that they're going in. Whether you like it or not, you will be affected by the company that you keep. And we have repeatedly mentioned many of the ahadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam indicating to, towards that. So, if we keep poor company, if we keep the company of those who are not God-fearing, if we keep the company of those who do not remember Allah azza wa jal and so on and so forth, slowly but surely we will lean towards their habits. And as I said, from amongst the evil consequences of that is the fact that we will have hardened hearts. Now we want to look finally at a few of those things which will assist us, bi subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
in attaining tender hearts and as a result of that eyes which will shed tears for the fear of Allah Azzawajal. First and foremost, we have to know our Creator Allah Azzawajal. Know Him by His beautiful names and His attributes, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Know, for example, that yes, He is Ghafoor Rahim. He is the most forgiving and the most merciful. But don't forget that He is Shadeed Al-Aqab, Aziz Al-Intiqam. Don't forget also on the other hand that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is severe in His punishment and He is swift in His punishment. Don't forget that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala takes people to task if they if they uh, are disobedient toward Him Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala. We have to understand who Allah Jalla Wa Ta'ala is. That how, how many or, or, or how much He has blessed us and how many favors He has sent our way. So know Allah Azza wa Jal and that will assist you. If you know Allah Azza wa Jal, if you know who He is, you will cry out of love for Him Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Because you will have that yearning to meet with your Creator Zilla Sa'nu. If you know Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, you will cry because you know that He is most forgiving and He is most merciful and He is forbearing and, and you overlooked our faults and so on and so forth. So you will cry knowing that you have hope. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not closed the doors on you. If we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how severe He is in His punishment and so on and so forth, then we will cry out of fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear that He subhanahu wa ta'ala may punish us and take us to task for our, for our wrongdoings. This is one, knowing Allah jalla wa ta'ala. Secondly, for us to recite the Quran. Thirdly, to also ponder over the meanings of the Qur'an. As for reciting the Qur'an, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ There is shifa, there is a cure in the Qur'an for us. The Qur'an can cure us from physical ailments as well as spiritual ailments. Even if you don't understand a word of Arabic, أُقْسِمُ لَكُمْ بِاللَّهِ I swear to you by Allah that if you recite the Qur'an and listen to the Qur'an, the Qur'an being the words of Allah Azza wa Jal as sent down to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam in the Arabic language, إِنَّا أَنزَلَّهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا Then you will find that your heart becomes tender if you listen to the Qur'an. Wallahi أَحِبَّةِ فِي اللَّهِ An individual that you know, I was working with for well over two or almost three years before he became a Muslim. While he was a non-Muslim, he used to come and ask me for recordings of the Qur'an because he said by listening to them he would find comfort and contentment. He said it was very soothing and very therapeutic for him to listen to the Qur'an. So the Qur'an, just reciting it without understanding its meaning will help us in attaining those tender hearts. Then what do you think if we were to ponder over what we are reciting? For those who do not know the Arabic language, we can read the meanings of the Qur'an in the language that we best understand. And remember when you are reciting the Qur'an, and remember when you are reading the meanings of the Qur'an, that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing me and you. Look at this as a personal letter to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one whom you long to meet, the one whom you love more than yourself, more than anyone and anything on the, on, on the face of the earth, more than anything that exists, you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine that this is His special letter to you, His address to you. Try to live with the ayahs. And don't just read them as you're reading a novel. When Allah Jalla wa'ala speaks of Jahannam, the hellfire, and the inhabitants of the hellfire, picture it. Try to picture it and try to imagine that you would be there and you will cry out of fear. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of paradise and the inhabitants of paradise, Try to picture Jannah. Try to imagine yourself in Jannah. And when you do so, you will cry out of hope and out of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So reciting the Qur'an as well as pondering over the meanings, the meanings of the Qur'an. Also, Zikrullah Azza wa Remembering Allah Jalla wa ala often. And how many times have I said it? When I say a zikr, not just to say those empty words, but rather to say those words knowing what you are saying. Subhanallah. When you say Subhanallah, for example, you know, very often, oh, uh, exalted be Allah. You know what, what you are really saying? When we say Subhanallah, we are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far above all of those 
terrible attributes that other people attribute to Allah Azza wa Jal. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of fault. And you will think about how the Jews said that Allah is one of a trinity. And you should shed tears. Have you not heard people reciting the Qur'an? And when they come to those ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of a trinity, for example, then the person reciting Christ is because this is an insult to Allah azza wa So, when we say subhanallah, we have to think about what we are saying. When we say alhamdulillah, we think about what we are saying. Insha'Allah ta'ala, these things will help us to, uh, so that we, uh, our hearts will become softened and we will shed tears before Allah azza wa Remembering that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam encouraged us to think about death often. Not only that, he encouraged us to visit the graveyards so that our heart will become tender, so our heart will become soft, so we will be reminded of the hereafter, so we will be reminded of the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about visiting those who are ill? What about visiting people who are terminally ill, people who are about to die? Do you know that that has a strong impact on an individual? Because you see this person about to leave the world and you think about yourself. Wow, if I were in his position and if my books were to be presented before me, which would outweigh which? The good deeds, would they outweigh the bad or would it be the other way around? These types of things make us think. These types of things will soften our hearts bi-idhnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last of the things that I want to mention, as I said, there are many things, but the last of them, listening to beneficial lectures. وَعَذَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَوْعِظَةً بَلِيغَةً ذَرَفَتْ مِنْهَا الْعِيُونَ Even the Sahaba, when he used to sit and listen to the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام, when he used to admonish them, when he used to speak to them and address them, Remind them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would sit, Ya subhanallah, and if a bird were to sit on one of their heads, it wouldn't fly away because they would be still just listening to what he was saying. They would be mesmerized and they would, their, their eyes would become filled with tears. So we also should make it a habit. And subhanallah, today it is much easier than yesterday. You have the internet and you have many reliable sources. You have lectures galore all over the place. All of you who have these iPhones and so on and so forth, you can tune into those lectures even while you're driving, even don't turn on the radio, listen to something where you're reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, where you are reminded of your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where you're reminded of your duties towards Allah wa ta'ala and so on and so forth. And finally, I beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who have tender hearts and eyes which shed tears so that we will not enter uh, we will not enter into the hellfire hada wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in